we press play now, you can see that we have a different texture on the sides of the when it when it's basically when it's a vertical wall. Hello and welcome to another how to make seven days to die type game in Unity. This one is going to be on how to make a triplanar shader. This was originally going to be the full terrain texturing video, but I found it took far too long. So we're just going to, we're going to break it into, we're going to do the triplanar shader part in this one. And then we're going to do the sort of splat mapping texture atlas type thing in the next, maybe not the next, di well, we'll figure out. It's, it's going to be in a different video is the gist of what I'm saying. So first off, apologies for this one being a day or so late. You will still get another video later this week. The, the thing I seem to be ending up on is a bit less less one video a week and more four videos a month, just not necessarily evenly spaced out throughout that month. And you can blame Christmas, work, child, and a slight factorio addiction. So in this video, we are going to make the aforementioned triplanar shader and give our terrain a bit of texture. And for that, we're gonna need some textures. So as you can see here, I have a free texture asset downloading as we speak. And as soon as that is downloaded, I will be able to stop just yammering away and killing time waiting for it to be downloaded and I will be able to show you what we're going to do. Are we downloaded? I believe that Unity is supposed to be bringing in something that makes downloading assets or in importing assets a lot quicker and it can't come soon enough. So let's go into our materials and we'll create a new material, which we'll just call terrain. And we will grab a texture out of our new texture pack, which has a lot of folders. So I just want some, some nice basic grass. So we'll use this and we'll pull up our material once more, terrain, and then ground six diffuse, we will pull into the albedo and you can see we have a grassy texture there. If I go to our marching cube object and I drag this material on there, so if we press play now, we'll see that our terrain has changed color, but it has not gained texture. Now the reason for this is because we are not setting any UV coordinates. So basically the whole of the mesh is sampling the exact same point in the texture, which I believe is the bottom left corner, zero, zero, of the texture, of the grass texture. And obviously that's no good. Now we could try and assign UV coordinates to the whole thing, but we've got a much better way of doing it. And we're gonna use a triplanar shader. So first off, let's go into our script and we'll make a shader. So create shader and we want a standard surface shader. If you follow the Minecraft series, we did unlit shader, which is basically like a vertex shader. We're gonna do a surface shader in this one. So we'll just call it terrain shader, it's fine, it doesn't really, again, the name is entirely up to you. Now, at the moment, this has a lot of stuff in it that uh, we don't need. <laughs> so we're gonna get rid of a lot of this. In fact, I'm basically, I, I will get rid of it all because I wanna start from scratch and I wanna explain everything as I go because uh, hopefully if I explain it all, it will hide the fact that, I'll be honest, I don't fully understand it all myself. So let's start off with the properties block. And these are the properties that will show up in the inspector when you click on this material and as a result, the things that you can change. So the first one, we're gonna call main text and it is gonna be called texture. It's gonna be of type 2D and by default, it's going to equal white. And then the next one is gonna be text scale. It's going to be texture scale going to be of type float and by default it's going to equal one so let's just go to our materials let's go to terrain and oh actually first we need to no we'll leave it in custom for now you can, if you want to put it in its own little subcategory you can change custom obviously you can change the name but up here in ter in the uh, terrain shader if you drop down this menu these here are the places that the shader is in. So right now we haven't, I don't think we can access ours because we haven't actually got any shader because there's no shader here. But when we have, we'll be able to access it through these menus and it will show up under custom. So let's get to a point where we can actually do that. And I will put comments on these. I'll, put, I'll heavily comment this before I upload it to GitHub. So we need a sub shader. 
and you can have multiple sub shaders in a in a given shader and basically unity will use the first one that is compatible that it comes across that is compatible with the machine so we need some tags the first one being rendered to actually we only need one thinking about it first one and only one being render type and that's going to equal opaque none of our terrain is going to be semi transparent or anything like that we need a level of detail value so this is one of the things that would be graphics card dependent. Basically, if you go onto the documentation, you can see that different levels of detail include different features. 100 is the lowest and it goes up from there. And, and I think 500, 600 has like all the features like bumped, specular, that kind of thing. For, for this, for now, we're just going to use 200. We don't need anything particularly fancy. So we need a CG program tab and then we're going to say... Pragma, surface, surf, standard. And you need to be sure about your spelling here because you don't get any syntax correction. And we want full forward shadows. And then another pragma, target, and we're gonna use three O. So the target is the lower the target, the fewer features, but the more compatibility. So if you want to do something really fancy and high end, you're gonna need a higher target. But unfortunately, the flip side of that is that it will work on fewer machines. Whereas you can have a really low target, like two or 2.5, and it will work on just about any machine, but you won't get some of the really cool new high end features. Then we need a, we need to declare our value. So these variables here, that's basically just making it so we can access them in the inspector, but we actually need to declare them down here so that we can use them in the shader itself I'm really not keen on the way that Visual Studio is trying to uh, reformat my tab spacing it's completely inconsistent <laughs> for a surface shader we need a struct called input and this basically sets up the data that we want in our case we want a float called world pause these values are not renameable, by the way. To get this particular piece of data, it needs to be called world pause, capitalized as it is there. And sorry, these are float threes, not floats. Float three, you can think of as basically a vector three. And then world normal. So those are the two values that we need right now. They need to be called world pause and world normal, as I've called them there, to, in order to get the right data from the input struct. And then we can go ahead and create our main surf function. So. We'll call void surf and then we want to get our input and then we want to get our output which is surface output standard and we're just going to call it O because that seems to be the convention. Now in here what we could do is say O dot albedo equals and then we get a text 2D reference we only have one texture to get a reference from. And then we say in dot world pause and we could say X, Y. And then we need to end CG. We can give it a fallback if you wish. So in this case, I'm just gonna say fallback diffuse. Oh, we have a pass error. Why is that? Uh, sorry, no semicolon on the end of there. So now if we go to our actual material, terrain and we drop this down we see we have this custom one now and like I say if you want to change that you can call that the name of your game or whatever you're calling your shader and we're going to custom we have terrain shader so if I click that and we press play now you can see we've kind of got grass although it really isn't very nice so the reason for this is we are projecting or uh, we are drawing our texture in one direction so that direction uh, I can't actually remember what direction I chose um, I could change this to, let's see, YZ, and it would be equally as messy, but in a different kind of way. See, now the lines are going from, because the texture is coming from a different angle, the lines are in a, the stretch marks are in a different place. And then finally, the, the remaining axis, axis is XZ, which I think is straight down. Yeah, that, that one's going to look the best because that one is straight down. So that's basically, if you imagine the texture is being projected from the top straight down, when you've got flat terrain like this, that's going to look the best. So let's just 
open up our script for marching and we're going to stick in here uh, where are we? in here sorry we're just going to create a hole in the ground so if x is greater than we'll say 5 and x is less than 15 and z is greater than 5 and z is less than 15 this height equals I think it's 1 is above ground I will need to declare this height above here and then we can just put an else there so I think that should give us a hole in the ground or a column of dirt one of the two yeah so there we, we've got a bit of a hole in the ground and as you can see the texture doesn't look nearly as nice going up the wall as it does on top so let's fix that so going back into our terrain shader what we need to do in our surf function is first off we want to implement our scaling so we'll do that by creating a new float 3 which we'll call scaled world pause and that's going to equal in dot world pause divided by text scale and then in here instead of using in dot world pause we're going to use scaled world pause that should make it so that we can now modify the scale of our texture now if you go into your material here that won't always work because this is an instanced texture so what you'll need to do or just try it I don't think it will work but if I just move this value now oh it is working okay I take that back if you ever try this though and it doesn't work what you need to do is you need to go into your actual mesh and then find your material in here which should be at the bottom here and move that one so that makes the texture itself, the scale itself work. So the next thing we need to do is make it so that it projects correctly, regardless of the direction that the normal or the geometry is facing. The way we do that is we basically project it three times from the three different axes and blend the result. So in order to blend the result, we need to know how much to blend it with. Like we need to weight each direction and we do that by creating a new value called p weight that's going to equal in dot sorry that's a capital in dot world normal but actually we don't want any negative numbers it doesn't matter if the number's negative and we don't want the negative numbers specifically which it could be like the world normal could be going minus x minus z whatever so we're going to use the abs function which will if it's minus one it will just come out as one and then we want to modify that number by dividing it by the sum of pweight.x plus pweight.y plus pweight.z. So that gets us our blend value. And then we need to come up with three new values, which I'm just going to call float xp, uh, sorry, float 3xp xp is for x projection and it's going to equal text 2d main text scaled world pause dot yz times p weight dot x so it's blending it by the x value so if if we're strongly facing on the along the x axis then this p weight is going to be higher and therefore whatever this color is is going to come out stronger and then we're going to do the same for Y and the same for Z. And for Y, it is X, X, Z, I'm pretty sure. And for Z, it is X, Y. And then for O, we're just going to add the three of them together. XP plus YP plus ZP. Let's try that. Oh, we've got an error. Oh, yeah, I need equal signs here. Okay, let's get rid of the error. So if I press play now, we should have terrain that's not stretched. And there we go. I mean, it's kind of stretched on these awkward vertices at the top here. I mean, you could carry on adding more directions, but at some point it does get a bit silly. But this is good enough for what we want. We're not getting stretched, uh, stretched textures going up these vertical walls. So, I mean, that's basically it for what I wanted to show you in this video. The complicated stuff will start in the next one. But there is one thing that I wanted to do just to give us something a little 
more interesting to look at while we work on this series up until we finish off the texturing. And that is what you can do is we will we'll go up to here and we'll create a new texture value and we're going to call this wall text. I think, yeah, wall text will do. Yeah, we'll just stick with wall texture. And it's 2D and it's going to equal white exactly the same as above. And we're going to declare it here. And then what we're going to do with this one is if it is on the horizontal, so if we're going along the X axis or the Z axis, we're going to use wall text instead of main text. And then if we go into our material, wherever it is, now what do we want? We want we want some kind of rocky texture. You know what, let's just use this one. <laughs> I thought there was a rocky texture in this pack, but it doesn't look like there is. So I've, I've already forgotten which one it was, that one. So ground 10 we're gonna use. So let's go back to our materials, open up terrain, and then we want ground 10, and we want the diffuse, and we're gonna put that in the wall texture. And if we press play now, you can see that we have a different texture on the sides of the when it when it's basically when it's a vertical wall and it, it just gives a bit more color and you can see it, it it does slightly come into effect on these slopes and if i dig a little hole here you can see that the sides of it are more dirt than they are grass or more dirt than otherwise and it gets darker as you dig down this isn't by the way the way we're going to do the whole thing this is just to make things a little bit more interesting while we get to that point and hopefully make it a little bit easier to understand what's actually going on here so uh, yeah that's it, it just makes everything a little bit more interesting to look at we will hopefully get to the rest of it soon but yeah that's it for this one i know it's a bit of a short one like i say i'm so sorry this one's a bit late there will be another video this week so the only thing left to do on this video now is to thank my patreons and as always special thanks to professor dj and i will see you all next time Bye-bye.